Hello, welcome to this variant demo in which I'll be walking you through some of the main points and interesting things of this new feature that we're about to be releasing soon. We already have a component that we've created and as you can see, it's set up with a name that indicates the folders in which it lives in the assets tab. So we have switch slash on slash label. We're going to create a variant out of it. Um, we can do that by selecting the component and pressing Ctrl K. And as you can see, all of the sections of the breadcrumb we've seen earlier are now the property values for our variant. So now we're going to create more variants, edit their look and organize them. We now have all these different variants, but they're all set up in one single line. So I'd like to change the layout of a whole set. So in this case, I'm going to edit my flex layout. Specifically, I'm going to add a wrap so I can have more rows, but you can also use grid layout or just remove the layout entirely. Then you'll be able to move the components around manually within the purple confines of the component. So now that we're at it, I want to show that if you drag a variant outside of these boundaries, you're turning it into a component. And as you can see, the structure we initially had is preserved. So we still have switch slash on slash label. The same thing happens if you move it back in because of the correlation we showed earlier between the component name and the variant property names. So don't worry if you drag a variant by accident because any of these changes are reversible. So now, in order to use the variants, we need to assign them specific values. There are two ways to do this. Uh, one is through the design tab. For this component in particular, we have this on and off property that we, we're going to call state. And we can set it up by editing the values here in the design tab in the component section. We can also do it by editing the name of the layers. So when you double click on the layer name, you'll see that the properties that are in the design tab are also reflected here with the following structure, property equal property value, comma property equal property value, and on and on. And you can edit this as well, as long as you follow the structure. So now we've set up our variants and it's time to try them out. There are different ways to do this. One is by dragging a variant while pressing Alt and this creates a copy of the variant. But mm, for whatever reason, you might not have the main one nearby or even the same file. You might be using libraries. And in this case, you can go to the Assets tab and bring the main component to the workspace. And then you'll be able to select the exact variant that you need by using these selectors here. The most valuable thing happening in variants is the ability to preserve the overrides between them. So if I decide that for a specific case scenario, I want to make the background of this variant mm, pink instead of green, I can edit it. And then if I decide to switch my variant for another one, I can do so and this color change is preserved. So this really cool thing about preserving overrides is possible because some rules apply to the way I set up my variants. So for two layers to be connected, they need to have the same name, be of the same type, and have the same hierarchy level. If this doesn't happen, the connection is broken. So if, for example, I call this layer hello, and this other one is called board, if I do the same thing as we did before about changing the color and then switching to another variant, the override in this case isn't preserved. So bear this in mind because it might actually work in your favor for specific cases. So another useful thing about variants is that you can restore a variant from a copy if you have deleted the main one. So let's try it. 
I have this variant copy and I am removing its main. And you can see that now the copy appears as an orphan, but we can right click it on the menu and restore it. And the interesting thing is that all of the properties and property values are preserved. Similarly, you might remove the whole component with all of the variants inside. In this case, if you restore a variant from a copy, you will see that it's brought back as an independent component with the breadcrumb structure that we had at the beginning. So we're reaching the end of the demo. I hope you liked it and that you got an idea of how powerful this feature is. I also wanted to make a special mention to how having tokens can be beneficial to setting up variants. So for example, if I wanted to have my components for a dark theme and a light theme, instead of having to create all of those variants independently, which would make the file much larger and heavier and more difficult to manage and to maintain, we could set up the tokens for that and there would be no need to create those variants independently. And well, thank you very much and see you in the next demo.